Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a little tutorial on pen testing tools in Java. I've got it right here, a couple of basic pen testing tools. We have the derp scanner for scanning the directories of the web application or website. We have the pass crack for cracking the passwords. In this scenario, MD5 passwords. And we have the port scanner, just the most basic port scanner that we could make. The reason I'm making this is just for you guys to grasp the basics of creating tools for pen testing in Java. So this tutorial is meant to just show you how some of the basic tools work and how you could go about making them yourself so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the package that we defined right here it was defined by the IDE but I renamed it but it doesn't really matter so the, most of this stuff IDE will do for you now of course keep in mind that I will not explain the basics of Java in this tutorial I'm going to explain how these work and how I program them so these are all of our imports but we're not gonna list all of them right now or explain all of them because we don't really need to do that right now as we're coding we're actually going to go back to that so the only thing that I manually imported is the J of champagne from what I remember the reason we need J of champagne is because we we want to have a pop-up ask us what do we want to scan okay so right here we have the class called derp scanner and in it we have the psvm the public static void main method that throws the file and found exception and this was actually imported by the ide when i typed in so the first thing we're doing is we're initializing some variables that we have to initialize so we have the url set to null we have the http url connection called con is set to null we have the string word list set to common.txt now common.txt is in the folder where the project is in other words let me just show you in other words in this folder right here where my files are where the project is defined as you can see we have the common.txt in our case it's just a couple of directories to check we also have the test.txt which we're going to use for password cracking later so now that we know which file we're going to load common.txt we're going to actually define the string x y is going to be nothing so I just named this for no reason x y doesn't really matter so we have a try and then we have a catch right here it throws an IO exception because we're opening a file so in our try we're actually trying to read into to the buffer so we're using the buffer reader be called br and we're using new buffer reader and in it we are actually using the new file reader and word list so new file reader will actually read what's in the word list and in our case it's common.txt we don't need to provide the full directory to it because it's in the directory where the project is running from so it will find it right away and then we're putting that into the buffer so now next thing we're doing is we're just printing this out uh, we're actually reading the word list and just a new line right here so we can start printing everything nicely so it looks nice and then we have the string of Line. we're just initializing the variable nothing really special here and we're using another try and catch just to be more safe the same that we're doing here uh, this is just for the safety and we're throwing the, a specific exception if it doesn't set it so what we have is setting the URL variable and as you remember from before we have the string URL set to null so this is a string variable and we have a J option pane show input dialog so what this means is it will pop up a pop-up and it will ask you uh, enter the host that you want to scan so the user will actually enter like facebook.com or something like that with the protocol and then it will append the program will just append a slash and then a directory from the word list and then if that fails we obviously have the exception thrown and then we have the while the while line and we're defining line to be br.readline so what we're doing is reading line by line and if the line that we're reading is not null so until we get to the end we're going to do all of this so what is going to happen here is we're first going to replace the new line from the line with nothing. So because the line won't be like this, so it won't be like, uh, I don't know, robots.txt. It will be actually written down as robots.txt and then a backslash and then an end or something similar to that because there's a new line so in case that we do have that we're going to replace it in case we don't we're just going to ignore that so anyways just redefine this for no reason you don't actually have to do this we can we could have just used the line but i typed in a new line for no reason so anyways we're redefining the same thing and now xt becomes what line is then we have a new string called ext and that's going to be the slash the forward slash and the xy so as you realize from here this string x is going to look something like this so let's say we have robots.txt is one of the lines let's say it's the first line and we're reading the first line it's going to be robots.txt and as you can see right here we have the slash and then now it's going to be slash robot.txt and as you remember from before we have the URL written by the user so it's going to be like this so this string is going to be added to this one and it's going to look like this so we're going to test if this works obviously if the request to this website returns 200 it means that it exists uh, you know so we can actually write that out but if it returns 404 or something like that we know it doesn't so anyways these are status codes you should definitely learn about that if you don't know status codes on websites it's something that you can find very useful and then we're printing out what we're 
we're checking for. Nothing special, you don't actually need to do this, I just left it there for verbosity. Okay, so the next thing we have is a couple of try and catches. So the first thing we're doing is we're redefining the URL to be URL plus extension. So as I said right before that we had, is it's going to be HTTPS Facebook, um, you know, slash uh, robots.txt. And then we have the URL Y, which is a type of URL. This is really important because we're actually going to have to feed this into the dot open connection. So we're initializing a new URL and it's taking a string. So this was a string from before and now it's going to be formed into a URL using the new URL. So right here, IDE is going to ask you for all these imports as you're coding. So I definitely recommend using the uh, NetBeans IDE or uh, maybe even Eclipse or something like that. You can definitely do it yourself without the IDEs, no problem. You could just literally copy this whole code. It doesn't really matter. So as you can see right here, we have the HTTP URL connection con and it was null. And now we're redefining it to something else. It's not null anymore. It's this. So it's a type of HTTP URL connection. And right here, you can see we have the HTTP URL connection specified as well. So we're creating a new HTTP URL connection and we have a space right here. Uh, this is a really important thing for some of you who are new to Java. Keep this in mind. There's a space, not a dot or a comma or anything like that. And then we're using our URL Y, which is the form URL type that we defined. And then we're using dot open connection. So we're opening the connection uh, of this specific URL. We're sending the request to facebook.com slash robots.txt, for example. The next thing we're doing is because we didn't officially send the connection yet, we have defined it well, but we haven't set the type. So we're setting the request method to be get because we don't need post. Uh, so it's just going to be regular get. And then the connection is actually sent. And then we have the if the connection dot response code is 200. As I mentioned before, the response code will be 200 if the URL actually exists, if there's something on that URL. And we can print it out. We found 200 on there and then some there, uh, the extension actually. So anyways, uh, that's it. And we have another exception. So let me show you how this works so the scanner once ran so i'm going to shift plus f6 okay and it's going to say wordless red starting the new derp process and we have to provide the host that we want to scan and we're going to use google and we're not going to provide the slash at the at the end because we're actually appending it ourselves uh usually it would there would be an if statement to check if there is a slash at the end but i don't think anyone just puts it there so it should probably be fine so anyways we're going to provide google because i know they have robots.txt so if i press ok we're going to wait and as you can see robots.txt actually was actually found so found 200 on their robots.txt everything else was not found so it doesn't seem like there's an index.html, index.php. Uh, in other words, we didn't specify for 300s and 302 redirections. So keep that in mind. You can specify that specifically. What you could do is you could just, instead of printing out all of these directories, you could just print out response code all the time. So that would be pretty good. Um, nothing special. You would just add something, something like right here. So if the response code is 200, we're going to do this. Otherwise, we're going to just print out the response code. So let's just like that found. And then we can say, leave this here. Uh, con dot get response code and right here so it's going to print out every response code so if i run this and we'll do the same thing again let's run on google and there we go as you can see we have 404s and stuff like that we have a 200 right here and 404s and that's it. So now let's move on to the next one. We have the passcrack.java. The same thing goes for these ones, just ignore them. And we have the passcrack class. In it, there's a public static void main. Uh, it throws another exception and no such algorithm exception. This is defined by the libraries that I used, the modules, and they auto import it and they ask for throwing of these exceptions. So now we have the wordless string. It is just a string that we're going to use for opening the wordless the same way that we did before with the opening of the common.txt. This is the test.txt. It is a word list of files that could be encoded into MD5 and then compared to the hash that we need to crack. Now I use this specific hash because it's the user one to three, and I have that in my word list, so the cracking will actually work. So what we're doing essentially is we're trying all sorts of combinations with these words that we have in our test.dxt to get hashes and compare if they're the same. So let's say that we are trying to crack this hash right here, and then admin wasn't in our word list, it wouldn't find it. So keep that in mind. And then we have the algorithm MD5. So we've just defined that because it looks nicer boolean uh, verbose is false we're going to use this right here so if verbose is true we're going to say trying and then the hash so what i did basically right here is just made sure that we can uh, print out more of the things so i'm actually going to put it to true 
because I think it looks just a little nicer. Okay, so and then we're using a try and then a catch. If it doesn't open the file, it will throw an exception. So the same thing that we did previously with loading on the file, we're just loading a file and putting it into buffer reader uh, called BR. And we're printing out that we are using the file, defining the line, and then while line is, you know, not empty, then we're going to open and do all of that. And then we're going to read it and do all of this. So now we have the line and we're replacing the new line just like we did before. And now we're using the bytes of message. It's going to be a byte array. It is a line dot get bytes UTF-8. So what we're doing is we're getting the bytes of the string from the line. So let's say the string of the line, since there are different passwords in the file, one of the lines is going to be, let's say, admin. So we're getting the uh, bytes from that. And we're putting them into the bytes of message. And then we have the message digest MD. This is from a special library right here, java.security.messageDigest. And for that, we're using message digest dot get instance algorithm. So we're going to get instance of MD5. The algorithm is defined right here. And we're going to digest what we have into MD5. But before that, we need to define the MD variable because we're going to use MD dot digest and then bytes of message. So as you can see, bytes of message isn't used here. So the line admin wasn't put through here. This was just defining everything, getting everything ready. So now we're doing the magic and we have MD dot digest and then the message. So in our case, admin uh, in bytes. So now it's going to turn that into MD5 and you can print it out if you want to. And and then we're defining the big integer, big int. We're just calling it big int, why not? We're making it a new one and then one all the way to the digest variable. And we're making a new string called hash text and we're using big int to string 16. So we're converting this into a string of length 16. And if verbose is true, it's going to print out what we're trying. So as I said before, we're just going to print out what hash are we trying. So hash text. And if hash to crack contains hash text, in other words, if we have hash to crack right here, this one, and if inside of it there's a hash text uh, hash text is the hash that we converted so let's say the admin uh, converted to md5 matches this hash right here then we're going to print cracked password and the and the password that we cracked let me just show you how this works so you understand easier because i might have complicated things a little bit right now and as you can see it has cracked the password it has tried all of these hashes and it didn't find the match with the hash that we're looking for and the hash that we're looking for starts with 6ad and as you can see right here 6ad was cracked and it says cracked password shows the hash and it says user one two three and as you can see right here this is correct it is user one two three now if I change the hash I have the admin word in um, in my word list and if I run this again it should crack the hash again and as you can see, it did, it found admin. The last two is the port scanner. I'm not gonna explain this. I've explained this in the first two. These imports are just uh, wanted by the IDE, by the program itself. So the first thing we're defining is we have the J option pane, input dialog, enter the IP that you wanna scan. It's going to be a string type. So well, let's say the IP is gonna be user will import 127.001 and that's gonna be a string. And then we have int range one and range two. It uh, pops up asking for the range. So the first thing you're going to define is the starting port and the ending port. Uh, the range one is gonna be, let's say, 20 and the range 2 is going to be 23 and it's going to scan for 21, 22 and 23. So now what we have is an address IP. We're going to make a new address by using the get by name which means we're going to use our string that we use right here and we're going to convert that into an IP address because we have to convert it into that type. You can't just throw a string into it. So now what we're doing is making a for loop so we're making sure is range 1 is less than range 2 and we're going range 1 plus plus. So we're going to make sure we go through all of the ports and for each and every one of the ports we're going to use the socket we're going to define a new socket that will connect to the IP using the port range 1 and then we're printing out if the port is opened system print out found open port on that IP and we're closing the socket just for the safety and in other case if the port isn't open if it throws an exception it's going to system out print line just a dot so we know that it actually went through uh, but it didn't find an open port so now I don't have any website to scan and I don't think I should because port scanning is illegal in some countries but what I can do is I actually set up a Raspberry Pi really quick just just so I can scan it because it does have a port 22 open for SSH. So let's enter the IP. 1.113, I think that's my Raspberry Pi, so let's take a look. And then enter the port, port range, starting port. So starting port is gonna be 20, let's say, and then the ending port can be 23, and that should be pretty fast. So let's press okay. Since we only have three ports, it shouldn't take a while. And as you can see right here, we have the found open port 22 on 113. So that's pretty cool. This actually worked. And as you can see right here, it scanned for 20 and 21, and then it scanned for 23. These are the dots that are letting us know. And that's basically it. Really simple port scanner. The idea would be to maybe make a threaded port scanner or something like that. That would be way better or make a more user-friendly port scanner. But this is it for the basics. 
I'm gonna try to reply to all of your comments so make sure you ask the comments I always reply to them to all of them uh, also if I don't reply by any case although I will uh, you can always contact me on discord or Instagram or whatever you want you can email me it doesn't really matter I'll find I'll find the message I hope I'm helping you guys thank you so much for watching and have a nice day